Section 18 of Letters of Pliny by Pliny the Younger, translated by William Melmoth, revised by F. C. T. Bosonkay. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrew Coleman. Correspondence with Trajan. Letters 28 to 51. Letter 28 to the Emperor Trajan. After having experienced, sir, in Gabius Bassus, who commands on the Pontic coast, the greatest integrity, honour, and diligence, as well as the most particular respect to myself, I cannot refuse him my best wishes and suffrage, and I give them to him with all that fidelity which is due to you. I have found him abundantly qualified by having served in the army under you, and it is owing to the advantages of your discipline that he has learned to merit your favour. The soldiery and the people here, who have had full experience of his justice and humanity, rival each other in that glorious testimony they give of his conduct, both in public and in private, and I certify this with all the sincerity you have a right to expect from me. Letter 29. To the Emperor Trajan. Nymphidius Lupus, sir, and myself, served in the army together. He commanded a body of the auxiliary forces at the same time that I was military tribune, and it was from thence my affection for him began. A long acquaintance has since mutually endeared and strengthened our friendship. For this reason I did violence to his repose, and insisted upon his attending me into Bithynia as my assessor in council. He most readily granted me this proof of his friendship and without any regard to the plea of age, or the ease of retirement, he shared, and continues to share with me, the fatigue of public business. I consider his relations, therefore, as my own, in which number Nymphidius Lupus, his son, claims my particular regard. He is a youth of great merit and indefatigable application, and in every respect well worthy of so excellent a father. The early proof he gave of his merit, when he commanded a regiment of foot, shows him to be equal to any honour you may think proper to confer upon him, and it gained him the strongest testimony of approbation from those most illustrious personages, Julius Ferox and Fuscus Salinator. And I will add, sir, that I shall rejoice in any accession of dignity which he shall receive as an occasion of particular satisfaction to myself. Letter 30. To the Emperor Trajan. I beg your determination, sir, on a point I am exceedingly doubtful about. It is whether I should place the public slaves as sentries round the prisons of the several cities in this province, as has been hitherto the practice, or employ a party of soldiers for that purpose. On the one hand, I am afraid the public slaves will not attend this duty with the fidelity they ought, and on the other, that it will engage too large a body of the soldiery. In the meanwhile, I have joined a few of the latter with the former. I am apprehensive, however, there may be some danger that this method will occasion a general neglect of duty, as it will afford them a mutual opportunity of throwing the blame upon each other. Letter 31 Trajan to Pliny. There is no occasion, my dearest Secundus, to draw off any soldiers in order to guard the prisons. Let us rather persevere in the ancient customs observed in this province, of employing the public slaves for that purpose, and the fidelity with which they shall execute their duty will depend much upon your care and strict discipline. It is greatly to be feared as you observe, if the soldiers should be mixed with the public slaves, they will mutually trust to each other, and by that means grow so much the more negligent. But my principal objection is that as few soldiers as possible should be withdrawn from their standard. Letter 32 To the Emperor Trajan Gabius Bassus who commands upon the frontiers of Pontica, in a manner suitable to the respect and duty which he owes you, came to me, and has been with me, sir, 
for several days. As far as I could observe, he is a person of great merit and worthy of your favour. I acquainted him it was your order that he should retain only ten beneficiary soldiers, two horse guards, and one centurion out of the troops which you were pleased to assign to my command. He assured me those would not be sufficient, and that he would write to you accordingly, for which reason I thought it proper not immediately to recall his supernumeraries. Letter 33. Trajan to Pliny. I have received from Gabius Bassus the letter you mention, acquainting me that the number of soldiers I had ordered him was not sufficient and for your information i have directed my answer to be hereunto annexed it is very material to distinguish between what the exigency of affairs requires and what an ambitious desire of extending power may think necessary as for ourselves the public welfare must be our only guide accordingly it is incumbent upon us to take all possible care that the soldiers shall not be absent from their standard. Letter 34. To the Emperor Trajan. The Prusenses, sir, having an ancient bath which lies in a ruinous state, desire your leave to repair it. But, upon examination, I am of opinion it ought to be rebuilt. I think, therefore, you may indulge them in this request as there will be a sufficient fund for that purpose, partly from those debts which are due from private persons to the public, which I am now collecting in, and partly from what they raise among themselves towards furnishing the bath with oil, which they are willing to apply to the carrying on of this building, a work which the dignity of the city and the splendour of your times seem to demand. Letter 35. Trajan to Pliny. If the erecting a public bath will not be too great a charge upon the Prusenses, we may comply with their request, provided, however, that no new tax be levied for this purpose, nor any of those taken off which are appropriated to necessary services. Letter 36. To the Emperor Trajan. I am assured, sir, by your freedman and receiver General Maximus, that it is necessary he should have a party of soldiers assigned to him, over and besides the beneficiari, which, by your orders, I allotted to the very worthy Gemellinus. Those, therefore, which I found in his service, I thought proper he should retain, especially as he was going into Paphlagonia in order to procure corn. For his better protection likewise, and because it was his request, I added two of the cavalry. But I beg you would inform me, in your next dispatches, what method you would have me observe for the future in points of this nature. Letter 37. Trajan to Pliny. As my freedman Maximus was going upon an extraordinary commission to procure corn, I approve of your having supplied him with a file of soldiers but when he shall return to the duties of his former post i think two from you and as many from his coadjutor my receiver general viridius gemellinus will be sufficient letter thirty eight to the emperor trajan the very excellent young man sempronius caelianus having discovered two slaves among the recruits has sent them to me but i deferred passing sentence till i had consulted you the restorer and upholder of military discipline, concerning the punishment proper to be inflicted upon them. My principal doubt is that, whether, although they have taken the military oath, they are yet entered into any particular legion. I request you, therefore, sir, to inform me what course I should pursue in this affair, especially as it concerns example. Letter 39 Trajan to Pliny. Sempronius Caelianus has acted agreeably to my orders in sending such persons to be tried before you as appear to deserve capital punishment. It is material, however, in the case in question, to inquire whether these slaves enlisted themselves voluntarily or were chosen by the officers 
or presented as substitutes for others. If they were chosen, the officer is guilty. If they are substitutes, the blame rests with those who deputed them. But if, conscious of the legal inabilities of their station, they presented themselves voluntarily, the punishment must fall upon their own heads. That they are not yet entered into any legion makes no great difference in their case, for they ought to have given a true account of themselves immediately upon their being approved as fit for the service. Letter 40 To the Emperor Trajan As I have your permission, sir, to address myself to you in all my doubts, you will not consider it beneath your dignity to descend to those humbler affairs which concern my administration of this province. I find there are in several cities, particularly those of Nicomedia and Nicaea, certain persons who take upon themselves to act as public slaves, and receive an annual stipend accordingly. Notwithstanding, they have been condemned either to the mines, the public games, or other punishments of the like nature. Having received information of this abuse, I have been long debating with myself what I ought to do. On the one hand, to send them back again to the respective punishments, many of them being now grown old, and behaving, as I am assured, with sobriety and modesty, would, I thought, be proceeding against them too severely. On the other, to retain convicted criminals in the public service seemed not altogether decent. I considered at the same time to support these people in idleness would be an useless expense to the public and to leave them to starve would be dangerous. I was obliged, therefore, to suspend the determination of this matter till I could consult with you. You will be desirous, perhaps, to be informed how it happened that these persons escaped the punishments to which they were condemned. This inquiry I have also made, but cannot return you any satisfactory answer. The decrees against them were indeed produced, but no record appears of their having ever been reversed. It was asserted, however, that these people were pardoned upon their petition to the proconsuls, or their lieutenants, which seems likely to be the truth, as it is improbable any person would have dared to set them at liberty without authority. Letter 41 Trajan to Pliny You will remember you were sent into Bithynia for the particular purpose of correcting those many abuses which appeared in need of reform. Now none stands more so than that of criminals who have been sentenced to punishment should not only be set at liberty, as your letter informs me, without authority, but even appointed to employments which ought only to be exercised by persons whose characters are irreproachable. Those therefore among them who have been convicted within these ten years, and whose sentence has not been reversed by proper authority, must be sent back again to their respective punishments. But where more than ten years have elapsed since their conviction, and they are grown old and infirm, let them be disposed of in such employments as are but few degrees removed from the punishments to which they were sentenced, that is, either to attend upon the public baths, cleanse the common sewers, or repair the streets and highways, the usual offices assigned to such persons. Letter 42 To the Emperor Trajan While I was making a progress in a different part of the province, a most extensive fire broke out at Nicomedia, which not only consumed several private houses, but also two public buildings, the townhouse, and the temple of Isis, though they stood on contrary sides of the street. The occasion of its spreading thus far was partly owing to the violence of the wind, and partly to the indolence of the people, who, manifestly, stood idle and motionless spectators of this terrible calamity. The truth is, the city was not furnished with either engines, 
buckets, or any single instruments suitable for extinguishing fires, which I have now, however, given directions to have prepared. You will consider, sir, whether it may not be advisable to institute a company of firemen, consisting only of one hundred and fifty members. I will take care none but those of that business shall be admitted into it, and that the privileges granted them shall not be applied to any other purpose, as this corporate body will be restricted to so small a number of members. It will be easy to keep them under proper regulation. Letter 43. Trajan to Pliny. You are of opinion it would be proper to establish a company of firemen in Nicomedia, agreeably to what has been practised in several other cities. But it is to be remembered that societies of this sort have greatly disturbed the peace of the province in general, and of those cities in particular. Whatever name we give them, and for whatever purposes they may be founded, they will not fail to form themselves into factious assemblies, however short their meetings may be. It will therefore be safer to provide such machines as are of service in extinguishing fires, enjoining the owners of houses to assist in preventing the mischief from spreading, and, if it should be necessary, to call in the aid of the populace. Letter 44. To the Emperor Trajan. We have acquitted, sir, and renewed our annual vows for your prosperity, in which that of the empire is essentially involved, imploring the gods to grant us ever thus to pay, and thus to repeat them. Letter 45. Trajan to Pliny. I received the satisfaction, my dearest Secundus, of being informed by your letter that you, together with the people under your government, have both discharged and renewed your vows to the immortal gods for my health and happiness. Letter 46. To the Emperor Trajan. The citizens of Nicomedia, sir, have expended three millions three hundred and twenty-nine sesterces, in building an aqueduct, but, not being able to finish it, the works are entirely falling to ruin. They made a second attempt in another place where they laid out two millions, but this likewise is discontinued, so that, after having been at an immense charge to no purpose, they must still be at a further expense, in order to be accommodated with water. I have examined a fine spring from whence the water may be conveyed over arches, as was attempted in their first design, in such a manner that the higher, as well as level and low parts of the city, may be supplied. There are still remaining a very few of the old arches, and the square stones, however, employed in the former building, may be used in turning the new arches. I am of opinion, part should be raised with brick, as that will be the easier and cheaper material, but that this work may not meet with the same ill success as the former, it will be necessary to send here an architect, or someone skilled in the construction of this kind of waterworks, and I will venture to say, from the beauty and usefulness of the design, it will be an erection well worthy the splendour of your times. Letter 47. Trajan to Pliny. Care must be taken to supply the city of Nicomedia with water, and that business, I am well persuaded, you will perform with all the diligence you ought. But really, it is no less incumbent upon you to examine by whose misconduct it has happened that such large sums have been thrown away upon this, lest they apply the money to private purposes, and the aqueduct in question, like the preceding, should be begun, and afterwards left unfinished. You will let me know the result of your inquiry. Letter 48. To the Emperor Trajan. The citizens of Nicaea, sir, are building a theatre which, though it is not yet finished, 
has already exhausted, as I am informed, for I have not examined the account myself, above ten millions of sesterces, and, what is worse, I fear to no purpose. For either from the foundation being laid in soft marshy ground, or that the stone itself is light and crumbling, the walls are sinking and cracked from top to bottom. It deserves your consideration, therefore, whether it would be best to carry on this work, or entirely discontinue it, or rather, perhaps, whether it would not be most prudent absolutely to destroy it, for the buttresses and foundations by means of which it is from time to time kept up appear to me more expensive than solid. Several private persons have undertaken to build the compartment of this theatre at their own expense, some engaging to erect the portico, others the galleries over the pit but this design cannot be executed as the principal building which ought first to be completed is now at a stand this city is also rebuilding upon a far more enlarged plan the gymnasium which was burnt down before my arrival in the province they have already been at some and i rather fear a fruitless expense the structure is not only irregular and ill-proportioned but the present architect, who it must be owned is a rival to the person who was first employed, asserts that the walls, although twenty-two feet in thickness, are not strong enough to support the superstructure, as the interstices are filled up with quarry stones, and the walls are not overlaid with brickwork. Also the inhabitants of Claudiopolis are sinking, I cannot call it erecting, a large public bath, upon a low spot of ground which lies at the foot of a mountain. The fund appropriated for the carrying on of this work arises from the money which those honorary members you were pleased to add to the Senate paid, or at least are ready to pay whenever I call upon them, for their admission. As I am afraid, therefore, the public money in the city of Nicaea, and what is infinitely more valuable than any pecuniary consideration, your bounty in that of Nicopolis, should be ill applied. I must desire you to send hither an architect to inspect not only the theatre, but the bath, in order to consider whether, after all the expense which has already been laid out, it will be better to finish them upon the present plan, or alter the one and remove the other, in as far as may seem necessary, for otherwise we may perhaps throw away our future cost in endeavouring not to lose what we have already expended. Letter 49. Trajan to Pliny. You, who are upon the spot, will best be able to consider and determine what is proper to be done concerning the theatre which the inhabitants of Nicaea are building. As for myself, it will be sufficient if you let me know your determination. With respect to the particular parts of this theatre which are to be raised at a private charge, you will see those engagements fulfilled when the body of the building to which they are to be annexed shall be finished. These paltry Greeks are, I know, immoderately fond of gymnastic diversions, and therefore perhaps the citizens of Nicaea have planned a more magnificent building for this purpose than is necessary. However, they must be content with such as will be sufficient to answer the purpose for which it is intended. I leave it entirely to you to persuade the Claudia Politani, as you shall think proper with regard to their bath, which they have placed, it seems, in a very improper situation. As there is no province that is not furnished with men of skill and ingenuity, you cannot possibly want architects, unless you think it the shortest way to procure them from Rome, when it is generally from Greece that they come to us. Letter 50. To the Emperor Trajan. When I reflect upon the splendour of your exalted station and the magnanimity of your spirit, 
nothing i am persuaded can be more suitable to both than to point out to you such works as are worthy of your glorious and immortal name as being no less useful than magnificent bordering upon the territories of the city of nicomedia is a most extensive lake over which marbles fruits woods and all kinds of materials the commodities of the country are brought over in boats up to the high road at little trouble and expense but from thence are conveyed in carriages to the seaside at a much greater charge and with great labour to remedy this inconvenience many hands will be in request but upon such an occasion they cannot be wanting for the country and particularly the city is exceedingly populous and one may assuredly hope that every person will readily engage in a work which will be of universal benefit. It only remains, then, to send hither, if you shall think proper, a surveyor or an architect, in order to examine whether the lake lies above the level of the sea, the engineers of this province being of opinion that the former is higher by forty cubits. I find there is in the neighbourhood of this place a large canal, which was cut by a king of this country, but as it is left unfinished, it is uncertain whether it was for the purpose of draining the adjacent fields, or making a communication between the lake and the river. It is equally doubtful, too, whether the death of the king, or the despair of being able to accomplish the design, prevented the completion of it. If this was the reason, I am so much the more eager and warmly desirous for the sake of your illustrious character, and I hope you will pardon me the ambition that you may have the glory of executing what kings could only attempt. Letter 51 Trajan to Pliny There is something in the scheme you propose of opening a communication between the lake and the sea, which may, perhaps, tempt me to consent. But you must first carefully examine the situation of this body of water, what quantity it contains, and from whence it is supplied, lest, by giving it an opening into the sea, it should be totally drained. You may apply to Calpurnius Macca for an engineer, and I will also send you from hence someone skilled in works of this nature. End of section 18